Hello and welcome back to Dial H for Hero Clicks. This is episode 399. We're going to be talking about the Storyline OP kit, House of Swords, answering some listener questions, and hyping up episode 400. I'm your sexy ranch and co host, Calderness. Howdy, howdy. Let's get rowdy. So if you're looking for emotional satisfaction, my advice to you is seek professional Hero Clicks. No. Are you serious? Again? How many people even play this game? Like the 100? Instant deadpan humor. Oh, how many six yeah. people think I am funny? It's a hard day's work. Not that you know anything about that. Which you absolute fools. It's not Witcher nonsense. I'm gonna make hero clips like that forever. Are you kidding me? <laughs> hey, Google, the back some more. Let the cat in because he's a jerk. Wow, wow, wow. ILH for Hero Clicks is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find cool stuff in stock every day, including all the latest Hero Clicks singles and sealed products. Make sure you check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Joining me, like always, in the studio is your Dial H for Hero Clicks champion, Simeon Bruce. What's going on, Simeon? How's it hanging? What on? year is it, Calder? I feel like I just came out of a Jumanji game board, and I'm completely Why? confused. Why? Why? Oh. Why? Well, it's it's because I've been uh, digging through the old Dial H catalog. Ooh. I've been looking for some of our best ofs, kind of our, our most fun moments, because, you know, we're at episode 399, which means the next episode, of course, if you can count, is going to be episode 399.5. Yeah, that's that is correct. Yeah, that is what we decided. Yeah, <laughs> it's gonna so, be it's gonna be the best that we've done from episode three hundred one to current. I current. guess is is essentially yeah, the way I can much. say. Um, I'm gonna miss a lot of stuff. I'm honestly like, I really want to add some of the hot takes that we had from like old rotations. Um, like when ID cards left, I really wanted to put like all of that in there, but I'm at the same right. time I'm like I can't put all that in there. Most people won't care about any of that. Um, you know, there's there's a bunch of like rules talk that we did that just doesn't make any sense anymore. So like I can't put that in there. Uh, but we're gonna put in like the funniest stuff. I'm actually I've put in a handful of our bloopers that our our patrons have already heard, but you'll be able to hear, and we'll talk a little bit more about that whole thing towards the end of the episode but yeah okay nice no uh this is gonna be really cool guys it just if you're being like no that's not a true episode 400 what the heck you gotta do it when it's supposed to be uh dial age has uploaded i think 406 episodes so from like part ones part twos and then on hero clicks episodes we already are over 400 but like a true blue dial age for hero clicks episode uh, we're going to have, you know, 399, 399.5. It's just next weekend was packed. It, we don't have the time for it. We want to do a really cool live event. We want it to not be half-baked. We want it to be everything. We want to give you guys an awesome show. And we are lining up for a great show. Plus, I've always wanted to have an episode where we just sort of have clips of, like, past episodes. I think it's hilarious. I think it's really funny when when yeah. shows do that, where it's like highlights, past shows, big blow yeah, ups my, from Stimmy and I or something that I listen to. Uh, they end every year with like their, you know, some like That's best good. of episode stuff. Yeah, and I really this year I was really trying to like clip out all of like my favorite stuff. It's just really hard to keep up with. So instead, what I'm doing is I'm I'm going all the way back to episode three hundred one and working forwards. Um, so we'll have, you know, roughly 99 episodes worth of content, which is 2020, March of 2020, to, so almost two full years of content. Yep. Um, except, like I said, we're I'm not going to, like, put, you know, uh, I almost wanted to include, we had a really good discussion with uh, Alex from the Patreon oh, um, yeah. about, like, hero clicks and magic and, like, some in-between kind of, like, minutia stuff i think it was episode like 334 i really wanted to include like that full discussion but that would have been like 10 minutes so instead i'm just i'm including mostly like the blooper fun little joke bits and uh it's gonna be like a, a retrospective uh the last two years almost of dial h Ooh, and you know nice. i think it's gonna be fun 
We'll see. I think it's gonna be an awesome episode. So with we're gonna talk more about episode four hundred hype. Believe you me, guys. We're, there's a lot. There's gonna be a lot of cool stuff we're gonna do. Um, so Simeon, let's get started with what made you happy this last week, my man. Was it listening, pouring through the data of Dial H for Hero Clicks <laughs> and going back and just time capsuling to a can't even say a simpler time because uh, it was. Oh man! Yeah, I'm not even gonna bring. Not it even gonna bring it up. Definitely a worse audio quality time for sure. Oh yeah. <laughs> um, I I do think episode three ninety nine point five will see the return of Money Style. So, oh please, as a, no! As a throwback no. to the majority oh, of the last hundred pain. episodes, I pain think we might we might have a Money Style. Um, pain and suffering. <laughs> I guess you gotta do one. It'll at least be in the episode, maybe fine. not the actual opener. Uh, no, what made me happy this week uh, is a pretty pretty simple week. You know, I just had a good week at work, had some fun stuff to do, and then it was uh, one of my yeah. friend's birthday parties that I went to uh, last night. So, uh, oh. you know, it was happy birthday, got a new car, exciting stuff. Ooh, you know, wow, yeah. One of those people that can get a new car for their birthday. Pretty crazy, huh? All right. All right, Simeon. Let's uh let's not was, let's just be happy for your friend, shall we? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm super happy. Wasn't even hung over this morning. Super happy for that person that wasn't hung over. <laughs> super cool. I'm glad that you're young enough to not have to experience that. You had a good time. And I guess. And I'm so I'm hearing. <laughs> is that, is that the, I, that I had great? a fine time. I was also Okay. Okay. Not hung over right. this morning because okay. I, I'm Good. too old Good. and I know my limits quite You're well old. now. That's true. Um, but yeah, yeah, it was fine. Fine time. Good. Good. Hey, glad that made you happy this week, <laughs> my man. I lo- I love how much how much spite can we put into what makes us happy every week? What made me happy this week? We began. Uh, the musical rehearsals. Oh gosh, no, not a musical. I'm not in a musical anymore. That time of my life is over and hopefully never happens again. Um, play rehearsals. I hate Hamlet. Uh, I'm really excited. The show is really funny. It's at a dinner theater, so it's a different one. It's not the one in Yankton this time. Um, and that cast, the director, are just really fun to work with. They're very professional. Not the last show wasn't, just the last show was a lot of dancing and a lot of singing and I, and not much acting and not much focus on acting. And as someone who enjoys acting, um, it really sucked. Uh, I'm not going to say it sucked. I mean, I did, but it wasn't as enjoyable as it could have been, I guess, is what, what I will say. Um, this show, however, is like majority acting, very few scenes where you have to worry about blocking and all sorts of crazy i mean there's obviously always blocking but there's no choreographed song and dance bs uh blocking is just where you walk when things happen in a scene Uh, um that's what blocking is so just so you know molecule man is very different than what this is right oh well if if molecule man were in a play yes this would be very very different than what we're what what you're used to 100 percent million percent hey speaking of molecule man i uh got nothing to say about him i don't i don't care that much about molecule man i don't know why i said speaking of molecule man (laughs) don't know why i said any of that but on somebody who is not made of molecules and not uh, a member of the fantastic four at all let's talk about x-men X of House of House of Swords, X House of X, Swords of X, House of Swords, X of Swords, Swords, yeah, Swords. Because apparently you can just at this point in comics you can just put X in front of any noun. So you, you know want, we've got X really? of chairs coming up, we've got X oh. of tables after that, X of cornucopias coming down the pipe. Ooh, you know, it's a good one for Thanksgiving. Uh, X of fruit basket. X of uh, I'm sorry cards, um, hmm. you know, all kinds of options that these writers have now. And you know what? You don't need to be, you don't, you know, you could have done like X of guns and they could have like every Bro, X-Men be, found. Every it. X-Men get the gun? <laughs> Just Let's like, go! Magic's like, Dude. Piotr, look how I tricked out my AR-15. <laughs> 
you're really, just, gonna give, you're really not going to give a Russian person yeah, an AK-47. No, no, Simeon. no. You're no. really going to give her an no, AR-15. Uh, well, because she's like U.S. nationalized. Uh, good and old, <laughs> good old Colossus will have like the chromed out AK that's the size of like a tree and shoots like fifty foot bullets. I don't, I don't know. It's like a bazooka. Oh, like, can we get Colossus AK forty seven Colossus clicks ASAP? Can X of Guns please be the next comic event? Can I mean, be the next at this event? point. At this point, like really, you've got guys that can shoot lasers out of their eyes. Like we've had several <laughs> movies where that happens. Uh, you've got you've got this Shang Chi movie where he can shoot rings out of his fist, and I'm really supposed to be worried about swords. True. Swords, like you have to be close the to use a sword. Like of technology, most of these X Men aren't metal. the. Uh, like while you oh. while you were out oh, I hanging studied out the blade. with mutants, I studied the blade. It's like, <laughs> sorry, kid, as they like, you know, my roommate behind you. Literally. That's what, what I really want from this set. So before right. we get into anything about this set, Don't while we're still just us randomly giving a sword absolute to trash every talking this character, I want uh, in a universe. <laughs> I want a uh, a night crawler that has like a bamf power. Where he's like teleports behind you. Sorry, kid. And you can use like Sorry, exploit kid. weakness for free or something. <laughs> uh, the trait is just teleports behind you, and like that's it. That's the yeah. whole trait. And then it's, yeah. No, it's teleports hey, behind so you. Sorry, kid. And teleports just, behind you. Dot, dot, dot. Phasing Sorry, teleport kid. after, after <laughs> Nightcrawler's giving a move action, uh, <laughs> make a exploit weakness attack for free. Or just a oh my gosh. attack, I guess. Whatever. Oh my gosh. Uh, he, uh, what I so, I don't know really what I want from the set. I don't know anything about. First of all, it's that I'm a big Nightcrawler fan, and that would be hilarious. That would be obviously the best thing to happen. Um, but if we get a cable, maybe that says X of Guns in, is like the trait. If that if that could happen, <laughs> I'd be all for it. We do have Kid Cable. He is, we have Kid Cable. Ah, yeah. uh, he's got a sword though. I don't yeah, want no sword. Cable, freaking loser. No sword. Techno sword. Get get like, a load of this feller. That is the most anime cable I've seen. Oh, dude, like he's like, I want. I want. My I sword, want a sword has a big object. line through it with a hole through it. You know, like from those anime shows, y'all like. Dude, it's like his sword literally looks like a USB stick. Like you could just pop <laughs> it, it from the handle, and it's like it looks it's not it's like a USB. <laughs> Like if if this cable isn't trapped inside of some uh, video, like inside a video VR game, video or game, or if you die in the game, you die in real life. Is that what you're yeah, trying to, try to say? That exact situation. Or he's like, that time I was reincarnated as a cable and had a hole in my sword. Like okay, for well. some reason, that's a big popular thing with anime as well. Is they were reincarnated in right. like a digital world. Right. Um, Lost in a fantasy world with my smartphone or something is like the name yeah. of some stupid anime somewhere. Digi cable. Digital Someone who likes cable. Digital. Dude, this really, to be fair, the mastery of swords is like an art. So if it was an online video game, it would. <laughs> I'm not going to say it. One more thing. I started it. I can't Swad do it. Odd, odd online. Um, Swad. <laughs> Before we get into this, so many people have commented like, "Can't wait for all these objects to hand out blades, claws, fangs," and it's like, really, like, come on, what else are they gonna do? Um, <laughs> but let's get into the actual set. So, so people, Dude, you want to read it? You want me to read it? Kind of clue. I'll I'll read this first little snippet. Okay. Um, okay. I'm not sure where exactly this is. So. Marvel Hero Clicks X Men X of Swords Booster Brick, an epic duel that determines the future of Otherworld. Ah, oh. not this one. Other world. Not Battle World Other, just yeah, Other World. Just other World. So, faded in the cards is the future of all realities. X Men X of Swords brings the cataclysmic showdown that will determine the future of mutant kind to Hero Clicks. Based on the crossover epic of X of Swords, this five-figure booster... So, yes, it is a five-figure booster. This isn't just a storyline OP thing. Um, there's going to be a full set built around it. Okay. So, five-figure booster release features iconic X-Men heroes and villains, including Cable, Storm, and Magneto. 
like you haven't seen them before in the last 12 sets. Right. Oh, wait, we right. pretty much have. As they stand up to defend the new mutant nation of Krakoa against Iska, Iska. the unbeaten Solemn, and the sword bearers of Arako. Which... Arako's modern life? Yeah, Arako's modern life. <laughs> for anyone that was watching cartoons in the 90s. Um... I I have not read this storyline, but I will say that the villains yeah. of this look way cooler than most villains. Uh, so with powerful characters like the White Sword Lady Roma. Ooh. Ooh. Wow. The White Sword Lady Roma. I wonder what she looks like. Is that and her title? Sat- <laughs> Saturn. It is. Oh my god. Yeah. Making their hero clicks debut. Be- debut. <laughs> Hey, boo. Oh, I'm scared. Don't uh, say it. Don't say that, Simi. You scared the heck out of me. Right. This is one set you don't want to miss. So these figures are some of the most unique and detailed yet with heroes like Cypher, Wolverine, and Gorgon wielding epic weapons and equally epic personalities and dynamic poses. Select boosters will also come with powerful objects in the form of legendary swords like Vermilion and the Muramasa Blade. So... We do get a image of the Muramasa blade. Um, that's the only one that I really know about from okay. almost all these ones listed. Let Essentially, the Muramasa blade can cancel out any kind of healing factor. That's exactly uh, what I was going to guess. For yeah, the listener it's what uh, Wolverine used only to kill Sabretooth. Um, right. You know, it's a very cool thing. If it has like some sort of effect that says like opposing characters can't use stop clicks when hit by this object mm. or can't heal after being hit by this object, something like that. I'm okay with that. That's cool. Yeah. Um, and then of course, I hope it gives like blades, claws, fangs, because <laughs> it's a sword. Uh, so in addition to everything else, it's a blade. So in addition to the sword bearers of Arako, the white sword, lady Roma and Saturnine mm-hmm. and Vermilion and the Murasa, Muramasa blade. In addition to all of that, Lucky players will also get a tarot card in their booster that adds a new dynamic layer of strategy to hero clicks. I don't know how it will do that, but interesting. Exclusive to X of Swords, tarot cards have strong effects that will add exciting new elements to team building and gameplay. Add more characters with the rally ability to your roster this set. So that's Awesome. A returning so uh, cool. trait Great. that will be Rally awesome. 5. Awesome. Yeah, Thank some you so much. Maybe some I really rally just need more fours. Rally 5 in my Can't life. Can't wait until I get a, a Rally 6 that lets me replace my Blades roll with a Rally die, and I get Blades from the object that I get. So, yeah. A lot of <laughs> Blades going on in the set, I'm guessing. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, giving you more options than ever on the battlefield. So this this set will not only give you characters, objects, uh, the white sword lady, uh, all of those right. things, but it's also giving you more options than ever on the battlefield because of these tarot cards. Uh, mission points are back as well, helping players discover huh? all new paths to victory. I really love that. Do, I, we, do we have any mission point X-Men characters? Were there any in... Um... Rise House and Fall X- or Rise and Fall? Yeah, I don't uh, think so. so. Blackheart didn't do it. Um, was there a Mission Point figure in Rise and Fall? I want to say there was, but I can't. For some reason, I can't think of it. So they must have been really bad, or they're an X Men, and I don't care. Probably <laughs> like maybe more along the lines, <laughs> but I can't think of an X Men Mission Point character. I'm they weren't in Mission Point: The House of X. They weren't introduced yet. It would have been just Rise and Fall. It, would, it feels yeah, it weird that we have didn't been, like, get a, a rare character in Rise and Fall, but there weren't I don't any. Like, none of the like Apocalypse doesn't do any mission point things. Uh, Gladiator, I don't think there was Gladiator one, mini, like Mimic. This is none this of is at least the first time things. mutants get a mission point character, which is that is fine. yeah, All right. that is something cool. to think about. Yeah. Um, so we'll be able to combo that with, of course, like Ultron Pym. Um, Ares from Wonder Woman 80, uh, Sue Storm from Fantastic Four, Future Foundation. All the mission Which point ball. figures that are almost good enough to do it on their own. Right. At this point, maybe 
we'll be able to finally make a mission point Maybe. team that does it. Yeah. Uh, also bring some of your most beloved hero clicks back into action with brand new legacy cards, this time featuring iconic X-Men figures. I mean, we knew this was going to be a thing. This is going to be a thing going forward. It's Honestly, it's pretty cool. If you don't already own legacy figures and you're like, man, I really missed the boat, um, it's fine. Most of them aren't competitive competitive enough to completely like own meta play. Um, yeah. I think the most competitive one we've seen is either Thanos or Morgan Le Fay, and neither of those have been like consistently winning. So yeah, I think I think Thanos is better than Morgan, but yeah. yes. I agree. I think Thanos has seen more play, more consistent play, and probably will continue to see play. But at the yeah. same time, you can build around. The, it's not like you have to have these figures. These are mostly like if you, for some reason, still have your really golden age figures, this is like really cool for those people. And right. as a new player, if you pull one of these legacy cards and you don't own the figure, I mean, that's just something free to trade for you because – Either you're looking for that figure and you're going to pay like more money for it, or you just sell the legacy card. So, honestly, yeah. not Easy. a bad idea. It's, just, it's literally just an instant, real free thing for your brick. Like, yeah. there's, n I will never say anything negative about legacy cards. They're just awesome. And then to finish it out, yeah. it says, with more than seventy figures and equipment and over thirty tarot cards to collect, this hero click set is one of the most unique and exciting sets to collect ever. Uh, so then they give you the UPC and SKU numbers, and they say the set contains 16 common figures, 14 uncommon figures, which I think is weird because normally it's 16 uncommons as well, uh, 14 rare figures and two primes, 12 super rare figures and two primes, 8 chase figures, 11 objects, and 30 plus tarot cards. So we don't know the exact number on the tarot cards, but there's 30 plus. So that's anywhere from 30 to infinity, in my opinion. But, you know, we don't know that for sure. Um, getting into the box art, the cover, the front of the box art is, of course, Wolverine holding a sword. It says Heroclix X-Men X of Swords. Collect all 64 figures. The side of the box is interesting because it says Horseman. You've got some Egyptian-looking god kind of creature dude holding a sword. And then you've got this weird flame-flying person next to him. So those apparently are two, maybe two of, like, Apocalypse's original horsemen. Maybe that's the horseman right. from this the, set. Right, the Egyptian theme, yeah. Yeah, no idea. Uh, down below, another sub-theme is Danger Room, which has a clear blue Apocalypse I'm not sure if this sculpt is one that we've already had. If it is, it's from House of X. But then an orange juggernaut, which looks to be the Rise and Fall juggernaut. Right. Or wait. Rise and Fall? House I don't know Rise and Fall juggernaut. I don't know Rise and Fall. No. Yeah, House of X. Yeah, yeah the House of X. So this go. would be, yeah, the House of X juggernaut. Of course, Tyler Spee's juggernaut. From the looks of it... Um, that's where this one comes from. And it's a pretty iconic looking sculpt. Uh, big old, no, it's like, good sculpt. yeah, big old debris dust cloud at the bottom. And then some sort of like debris kind of stuff around his body as well. Um, pretty cool sculpt. And then it is a, from my idea that like, it has to be a purple colored mystique. So of course the danger room constructs were previously unique slash prime versions of other characters in the set. So whether we see these as full-fledged characters or like the prime unique versions of characters in the set, not sure yet, but they are definitely going to be in the set. Yeah, I assume it's going to be, once again, the prime unique thing. I would uh, hope so, kind of, you know. Yeah. I Even though that means these are going to be like Two of them are either going to be rare primes or two of them are going to be super rare primes. I, I would say down. like Apocalypse be the super rare prime, non-prime, and then they might put jugs. There's no offense to Tyler or anybody else or WizKids for the sculpt. The sculpt's amazing. I'm just saying, out of all these, either both those big guys are the super rare prime or jugs is one of the rare primes. I would Apoc say 
is a super rare, and then Mystique has be, to be the yeah. lower end. She can't be a super rare prime. Her sculpt is too tiny, right. too small. I She's think that would be dang. fair as well because this is a set that has two super rare primes, two rare primes. So whereas previously we had uh, what was it? Magneto was like the common prime, and right. Sabretooth yeah. was the uncommon prime, and then Morph was not a danger room construct, was the actual prime, whereas the other the other danger room constructs were uniques. It'll be interesting because uh, by June or July, the other danger room constructs will probably be rotating. Oh, yeah. That was true. 2019. So that's almost been three years by the time that uh, rotation happens. And so it's pretty likely those ones will be gone. It'll be interesting to see how they change these ones because the other three were pretty much. You had like Sabretooth, that was a really solid close combat piece. You had Magneto, that was like the really solid range piece. And then you had Sinister, that was like the outwit, poison, kind of weird, supporty. But yeah. he was beefy, you mean invincible? They're all beefy, but. Well, and he was I mean. also really cheap. He was like 40 points. Like that it was, was like true, 50, yeah. 45, 40. Like and two just as the rarity went up, they got cheaper. So we'll see if this follows that trend. At the very least, I'm very intrigued, yeah. you know. And it's also, it's just a really cool sub-theme to keep doing. Uh, the flavor text on Magneto was really fun. Uh, come here, ex chicken that kind of thing. That was funny, yeah. Yeah. That was good stuff. That was good stuff. So hopefully this continues that trend. Um, moving on to the sculpts that they release in this solicit, we've got Young Cable with... As we kind of alluded to, he's got almost like a Cloud Strife sword. No idea what that sword is, but it's way too big for him to hold with his not yep. robot arm. Uh, yes. He's got some Tron looking colors to him. It's kind of neat, I guess. Uh, we've got Magic, who is screaming at her sword, whichever one that might be. It's definitely not the Soul Sword. Um, I don't not know. Her typical sword, yeah. It's something no. else. It's like a I, some kind of diamond sword. Like she's been playing Minecraft, you know? Yeah. All blue. Definitely. Yeah. Um He's doing some kind of I have yeah, the power. She's, she's like she's definitely a dream stan holding that diamond sword. Um I I will say this might be one of the first sculpts, like three D renderings of a sculpt that I've seen where the belly oh, buttons man. seem to be extremely oh. prominent. That's <laughs> it's likes himself. Prominent belly buttons. Simeon likes yeah, some yeah, prominent yeah. I'm belly super buttons. Super big into a, some belly buttons. Uh, but yeah. no, it's like, are they actually going to take the time to sculpt a belly button in? Uh, we've got Storm I, with what I'd looks like there. some sort of laser gladius kind of like short sword kind of thing. Know. Yeah. Like the pommel of the sword is the same length as, you know, it's like she picked up a candlestick and then a giant sword shot out of it. Except it's not giant. It's about the same length as like the, the handle. So interesting. Uh, her haircut is also like really short. And she looks real mad. So I don't know if this is... Until that was Storm right away. But I, yeah. I guess so. I'm assuming it's Storm. But uh, I, I don't quite know. Um, and then we get into our second solicit. Which, you want me to to tackle this one, I guess, if I have yeah, to, the miniatures so, game? So if you aren't following quite yet, we have a full five-figure booster, or I don't know what you call it, five-figure booster set. booster set, big main set. But, you know, like Billy Mays always said, there's more. That's a good, you know what? That, that was a good segue. Anytime you start something with Billy Mays, I'm here. So, Simeon, Faded in the Cards is the future of the all realities. X-Men, House of X, Swords. I'm not going to do it. I'm just going to screw myself <laughs> up. It's going to just get all over the place. I can't do it justice, so we're not going to do it. Um, miniatures game. Engage with up to eight exciting campaign scenarios for two players where the results matter from session to session. Or sit down for head-to-head -head single match of raw, pa raw power. Each of the beautiful pre-painted figures comes ready to play with two different modes, making this box incredible for both first-time players and Hero Who's veterans. So, standard, two different dials, blah, 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 kind of basic, standard, whatever, set here. Included are five of the all-new tarot cards. So that's kind of cool that you get five just tarot cards in this. If they are exclusive to this, I could see some people being mad. 
Uh, we'll see what happens if they are exclusive, if they're randomly packed in. I would, I guess, assume exclusive, so it's just easier to say this one gets these, like how they're yeah. the exclusive team-up cards in the X-Men starter. But that's kind of neat. That's a little bit more of an incentive to buy this. Um, it kind of says that they go with a whatever, a <laughs> new level strategy to Hero Clicks. Uh, for hundreds of different combinations, complete with thick doubles. They do say complete with thick, comma, double-sided map components. Unique X of Swords themed dice. This set contains everything two people need to play Hero Clicks with so much exciting content in the box. It's no surprise the miniatures game has been a massive hit with retailers and customers. What is this weird plug <laughs> at the end <laughs> for just Hero Clicks in general? It's no surprise uh, that this miniature game has been pretty, a massive hit with retailers it's like and on the back. customers. <laughs> Is like we're so good weird. at it. The guy writing this has just got like the <laughs> yeah. smuggest look on his face. Like, yeah, I know. There's what I'm so doing. much exciting content in one box. I mean, yeah, yeah. That's it like, does uh, have more than if formal, I was gonna though. pitch like the Wonder Woman 80th uh, miniatures game or like starter set as normal people would call it. I'd be like, with so much stop clicks in one box, it's no surprise that everyone wants this. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, but yeah, uh, that's that's House of X. Um, House of X, X Men, X of Swords. This I'm going to say this a million times. This is my yeah. new Spider Man Venom Absolute Carnage. It's hard. Um, it's so it's got the campaign for two people. It has ten uh, pre painted miniatures with two ways, obviously two different things. Twenty character cards, six object tokens, six double sided thick map tiles. No folds. I really wish they did have folds though. I really wish it was like a Monopoly board pulled out personally because that would make it so much easier to put the map tiles together. It's not that hard they're numbered and everything to get them put up but just like i don't know how many people are going to use these at tournaments in real life just because of how annoying it's going to be to carry around the map tiles and stuff but anyways i digress it's five tarot cards two custom x-men swords dice two full color power and ability cards and one full color hero Clicks core rulebook 2022 uh, editions 2022 editions for those rules yeah Oh, is uh, that so we, we did see Rise and Fall or not Wild. Rise and Fall Empire yeah. updated and corrected some of like the Wonder Woman stuff. I'm yep. assuming there will be no changes from Empire to this, but who knows? Who knows? That's right. I mean, who honestly knows? Uh, but that is basically it. Uh, next up is going to be the storyline, yeah. OP kit stuff. So this. So, so I'm sorry. If, can we just clear something up? This is a normal main set that just also has storyline OP kits happening with it, or is this a War of the Light so Age of Ultron this is, set? I'm still a little as confused. As far as I can tell, lie. this is a normal set that also has a essentially um, starter kit with it, and then along with the organized, or not along with the organized, but uh, along with the main set, there will be an organized play tournament. So... It, Okay. From my reading, it's not going to be like War of Light. It'll be, you know, maybe encouraged that you use sealed boosters for this, but not necessarily like that's how you have to play it. So, um, this specific solicit says Marvel Hero Clicks X Men X of Swords Storyline Organized Play Tournament Tournament Kit Month Two, which is strange to me, but you know, whatever. Uh, right. Storyline. Organized play returns with more to collect than ever before. Oh boy, I love when my organized play has so much to collect that I have to play at five venues to get it all. Based on the thrilling X-Men X of Swords saga, experience three months of brand new figures, objects, and exclusive new tarot cards. So X of Swords organi storyline organized play has been specifically crafted to motivate players to come back to your store for three consecutive months. That's how okay. most organized plays are, but anyhow. Recently have been, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Each month contains exclusive partic participation prizes, which is how all of them have been. Each kit contains limited edition prize figures, which is how they've always been. Each You're a kit... little mouthy today, Simeon. <laughs> Each kit's I'll boosters continue. contain select figures unavailable anywhere else. So that's the part. Each kit's boosters. These aren't like month-to-month boosters these aren't like specific as far as we can tell as far as what they've shown it's not like war of light month one is different than war of light month two like you know how 
those were different and age of ultron had different months with different figures um if that is the case that'll be kind of a different change to what they said in the original solicit uh then it continues every month players will get another chance to win with a fresh play experience players participating in all three months will have a chance to win the grand prize this is how most organized plays go Stores order Storyline OP kits directly from their distributor. Orders for this product will be verified against Store's demonstrated HeroClix event performance. No retail store location may order more than two tournament kits in total, which is kind of cool. Depending on, like, your performance, you know, if you host for more than, like, 30 people, it's going to be some rough, rough months of comp- competition um, because you can only order one. But if you're like a small local store and trying to, you know, order like five, you won't be able to. Tournament tournament kit contents. Ten count booster brick with four figures and one object per booster. So that is different than what I read for the, I believe. Let's see. Does this booster say anything about... So the X-Men Swords Booster Brick. I don't think it says anything about being four figures and one equipment per booster. So that's very interesting. Ten count booster brick with four figures and one object per booster. That would mean that you're essentially eight figures for a sealed tournament with two objects per booster. While that is cool to get that many objects... With only 11 objects, you're getting way less figures than you normally would. Uh, Five limited edition Pestilence participation figures. Five limited edition Gaia Whitechapel participation figures. Two limited edition Mojo prize figures. Ten each of two limited edition participation tarot cards, Justice and the Empress. Five double-sided color Heroclix maps. And one organized play addendum and instruction sheet outlining suggested event formats. Each kit comes attached to a corresponding 10 booster brick. So, I'm still not positive, but I think that this might just be like a how-to for the bricks that you're already getting in. Uh, It gives you the different SKU numbers and stuff. So, the booster brick for this SKU and UPC... Eight four eight three eight, uh, and so they do not match the booster SKU or UPC for the five figure booster that we talked about previously. So this might be a different brick entirely. It says kits are only available while supplies last. Kits are covered by the WizKids promotional product licensing agreement and are marked not for sale. Stores are not required to have a volunteer or judge present to run an event. Store owners may ultimately determine how events in their store will run and how the kits are used to promote the in-store play. A suggested format guide and player tracking sheet is included and makes it easy for stores to run Heroclix organized play for the first time. Um... Yeah, so it looks like not only do we get a five-figure booster set, we also get a four-figure plus object booster set for the organized play to potentially do like a weird sealed kind of situation. Um, But again, we're getting tarot cards in the main set, we're getting tarot cards in the starter set, and then we're getting tarot cards as prize support for the organized play. Uh, it's a lot of stuff. That's for sure. Interesting. So, well, I clearly should not have asked that question earlier because it was quite literally explained with this right here, how we're getting with normal X of Swords and then this weird OP kit X of Swords. Does it say it does not have prices? Okay, I, was, I would hope prices are a little bit cheaper with one less object i guess it's a whole tournament kit so your entire your venue just buys these it's not you who buys it so um it's probably yeah it's cool it's cool you'll have to buy into the the whatever um 
I like alternate takes on sculpts. Pirate Mojo is neat. We finally have our yeah, X of Guns so, character with I forgot what you said her name was, but she Gaia does have a White rifle over. Yeah, Gaia Whitechapel. Gaia Whitechapel with the big old blunderbuss and a gal. Yeah. The finally X of Guns. The super MMO RPG Yo, outfit dude, to it's, match. Uh, what's her face? Where in the world is Carmen San Diego? She's just oh, sure, Carmen sure. San Diego, dude. Look at that hat. Look at yeah, that. Yeah, if she was assassinating pit. people in ye oldie times, that's definitely Slaughter Carmen folk. San Diego. Definitely, bro. Oh, is that like Elsa it? Bloodstone? And she was like, ah, I'm going to trade in my gun for this X of Guns gun. X of Guns gun. Yeah. Um, uh, I'm assuming weird mummy sun Ra sculpt is the cool though. It say their pestilence so all black yeah, one we've, we've, no the one the one with like the mummy wraps and the oh on that the one, hip yeah that one is weird yeah yeah the, it's head, gotta be yeah. pestilence because that's the only figure that they don't list and have a picture of um, so then we get we get some images of figures from the set, which obviously you know we've got. Oh, we have the the month three as well. Want me to go so over month three, three here? Uh, or, I'm not gonna. I'm assuming that most of the basically the same stuff is the same. So we'll say prizes. limited edition one limited edition grand prize figure set box five limited edition famine participation set figures. Five limited edition Nimrod the Greater participation figures. Two like limited edition drone. <laughs> so cute. Pog Er Pog prize figures. Uh, and we'll decide which one that is. I'm guessing it's not the Pharaoh looking guy. Um, I'm assuming the Pharaoh is like death. And then the <laughs> yeah. Pogger guy is the is, dinosaur with is the dinosaur four arms, six stones, arms. Yeah. Um, ten each oh, of two gosh. limited edition participation tarot cards the Hero Fant and Emperor, five double sided mm. color Hero Clicks maps, one organized play addendum sheet, yada yada. Uh, so that's for month three. Uh, we get this very Egyptian uh, god-looking dude with, like, a little dagger doing, like, a karate chop. We get the hero fant, uh, and then we'll go into the, the tarot cards here at some point. But uh, the hero fant tarot card simply says combat values can't be modified or replaced. We have zero clue as to how these come into play Ew. or how long no. they'll be in play. If this is, like, a battlefield condition or, like, a feat card or or like a equipment or like a trait there's no clue we get a nimrod that is quite literally just like a floating orb um if you've read orb. it's a yeah. funny little like drone looking thing it's hilarious if you've read the same like the moira x storyline kind of thing this is not new to you but it's yeah it's the nimrod that's like a little floating sentry thing it's not like the actual big bulky uh nimrod body so it's hard to say what this thing will do and then we've got what i have to assume is pog or pog pog or uh, pog dude who is the poggers six Sorry, armed dinosaur like t-rex looking dude four of the arms being made out of complete rock holding yeah. a sword what more could you want from a figure? That is a lot going on. Uh, we get the Emperor, which is Emperor Vulcan sitting on a chair. And it says, when this card is put into play, each player chooses a friendly character with the highest point value on their force. While this card is pl in play, the chosen characters have Colossal Symbol and Safeguard Outwit. So, again, it says, while this card is in play, which means that there is definitely a time limit on how long the cards mm. are in play. Or at least something that can end how long the cards are in play. Like maybe right, right, right. while a card is in play, it's like that card is in play until another one is. Or like who knows? We really have no clue how these will roll out. But from what we've seen, there are some impressive kind of things that they go with them. Yes. Uh, piggybacking off of that, we then have a very cool Captain uh, Britain. He's got probably like Excalibur or something really cool outfit doing like a leap. Uh, we've got what I am assuming is Emma Frost, but could be literally anyone holding what looks like a spear in the worst possible way to hold a spear. Mm -hmm. I That's definitely not a sword. 
So maybe that one's not an equipment because that's not it's not how swords look. Uh, we get the oh. tower tarot card, which is fun. Mm. All misses are critical misses. I really like this one. Uh, the <laughs> the next tarot grab. card, of course, is uh, the magician, and this I don't know who this is. This looks like Rasputin, which was like the cross between uh, Colossus um, and other I characters. Think from house kind of setting up for dinner they've got a stick they could probably start a fire with that maybe got, uh and an infinity symbol chicken, over her head you know? we've got she's a, gonna be cooking some chicken a pentagram fire. on her cheese wheel uh she's holding the sword like she's about to cut the cheese wheel which is like please do i've been waiting here to be served food for a while why is there only one cup i hope that's my cup um this gives says characters have the mystic symbol. If a character can already use the mystic symbol, they deal one unavoidable damage instead. Ooh, Ooh. throwback. Real Whoa, unavoidable. Throwback. Why would yeah. we do unavoidable unless maybe penetrating damage doesn't matter? Huh? Huh? <laughs> Big think? Big yeah. think? Maybe we're going to have maybe. characters in the set that can reduce pen damage and unavoidably would be incredibly it's true. cool. Um, it gives be, true. All right. I, you know, since I started this game, Maybe I've always said it'd be cool if benches. Mystics did unavoidable instead of pen damage. I've always yeah. been like, man, that'd be yeah. really cool. That'd be really cool. And then, like, comes to find out that's, like, how I was playing it for the first four years of this game. And then, really weird. Why would yeah. you do that? <laughs> And then we finally oh, get to the, I guess we could have started with this one, uh, the month one kit. Of the organized play, so I probably should have started with this one. Um, but it's going to be a Captain Avalon, not Britain, like I said. Uh, Saturnine, it's two, limit, two limited edition Saturnine prize figures, ten limited edition Captain Avalon figures. Um, it's going to have the Magician, Magician and Tower Tarot cards. Magician. Yeah, Magician. And five double-sided Heroclix maps, one organized play addendum. So, yeah. That is the three months and the main booster. And that's pretty much it for X of Swords. There's a whole lot of stuff going on. And at the same time, we have almost no information as to how it's going to work or how to order it. Or I mean, obviously, if you work at a store you can use these SKUs and the UPCs that they've listed under these things. But, um, yeah, it's interesting. I'm really interested to see if the main set booster is going to be the same as this organized OP kit booster. Because I this one says four figures and one object per booster, and the main set does not say that yet. So if they change sure. that, it's going to be pretty hard to reconcile losing a figure for an object when there's only 11 objects. Yes. Yes. Oh, and uh, then finally, sorry. we oh. have the play at home kit, uh, one oh, limited edition pyro figure who oh, yeah, is pyro. Yeah. so out of place compared to the rest of like them. Like, just such a normal dude. He's just yeah. normally how Pyro looks. He's like, oh, Yellow jumpsuit. I guess I have fire? Everyone else has swords, but I have fire? He couldn't even give him looks a like. flaming sword. Like, doesn't he... Isn't there quite literally a flaming sword that we saw? I guess yeah, that's not him. we did see a flaming sword. I guess he doesn't get the flaming. Uh, and then one flaming, one raging, brand poisoning new... sword of doom. It's not Pyro's. Yeah. One brand new double-sided 24 by 36 map, oh. which is what we've come to expect from Play at Home Kits. So this is like none of that brand stuff. new is like in quotations though. Mm. You know what I mean? Brand new map. Like they've been giving us some brand new maps. Yeah. For a while. The yeah. dice and token set. I really wish I knew who all these characters were. Uh, we obviously have Cable, Apocalypse, Magic, Wolverine, and then two characters that I do not know. I'm guessing the one is the saturnine person that like i keep seeing the name for um and then so it's a purple and orange kind of color scheme for the tokens and then the dice are also the purple and orange and for the six it's two cross swords which they're like cutlasses so it's cool concept for the sword or for the dice um 
it does not immediately make me think of anything Marvel or Heroclix or comic related at all. Okay, right. But that could be for the best. I don't know. I don't I don't know, dude. All I know is that the Eight of Swords is the only yeah. thing that, that matters so far. So it's, yeah, uh, we also see describe it to the listener. We see three D renderings for Cypher and some other dude and then between the two of them we see the two of cups which is the two of them holding cups yeah and like cheering uh i don't know what's going on i haven't read the comic um cypher has like this big gold sword and the other dude looks kind of egyptian goddish and i'm just gonna say that because of like the eye kind of uh yeah, makeup sure, that yeah. they have on him and then he's I... got like a big spear kind of sword um after that, we have an image of what looks like, I think it's Set, the dog-headed Egyptian god. I'm guessing this is going to Don't be a me. horseman of something. Not positive. We get the Eight of Swords, which is the meme, the Wolverine meme, where he's yeah. laying in bed looking at the the picture frame of uh, Scott and Jean. And it's just... It's so hilarious. I knew at some point we would get it. I was hoping that we would get a hero click sculpt. I was hoping I'd win worlds at some point and be able to design this sculpt, but we finally get it. It's in a tarot card. It's the eight of swords. That's cool. Um, and then we get an image of the Muramasa blade. Uh, and that's, that's about it. We get the flame sword on its, it, these are like the wonder woman kind of pedestals that we've seen before. Yeah. So cool stuff. Um, yeah. I don't know. How are you feeling about this set? What are you thinking about the organized play? So I don't care uh, about X-Men, obviously. I don't care if you gave all the X-Men swords. Maybe if it was X of guns, I think that'd be kind of funny because it'd just be <laughs> hilarious. It's like we have powers. I mean, same thing. We have powers. Why do we need swords? Stupid magic swords. It's so dumb. Um, I'm not a D&D fan, so I'm like, why do I need magic swords in my set? Some D and D nerd definitely designed this X Men comic card. He's like, "We're gonna give them all swords. They're all gonna have abilities. Um, well, roll for was, damage." If it was fourth uh, edition, they'd give us uh, D one hundreds and guns. One hundreds. Oh gosh, that'd be and we'd baller. roll for accuracy. So, and that would be actually cool, ironically. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's fine. I like the idea of a new take on boosters, where it's four figures and then an object. Guaranteed object is cool. One less figure is a little rough for like you know sealed. Um, but that's okay. I think it can balance point values out. So sealed is fine. They've done that before with Civil War and with uh, Regenesis. So like that's fine. It's an X Men set, so I primarily dislike it. Uh, I think tarot cards are kind of dumb, unless this means we're getting a JoJo's Bizarre Adventure set. In which case, then it's not dumb. But any <laughs> other version of them, they are dumb. That'll be my official stance on it. I think they're kind of yeah. stupid, unless it's a JoJo reference. I um, will say. Like hero yeah. clicks aspect aside, the tarot cards is the most excited I've been about collecting some non figure thing in hero clicks yeah. in a long time. So for multiple reasons, tarot these tarot cards one you can put them next to your crystals. Yes, I will be able to okay. put them next to my crystals and infuse them with my essential oils. Hey, um, that's gonna be really cool. I'm I'll excited. be able to like take Calder's palm and be like, oh no 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 no. You would die soon. Yeah, um, look at this. <laughs> no, but as far as uh, so, in my opinion, ID cards were not super displayable. That wasn't like something I could really like put on display. Okay, um, just kind of like generic art and stuff. Um, Heroclix figures, I can. Heroclix cards, again, nothing special about the cards that I want to put on display. Uh, objects, even. Probably most of the time I wouldn't unless it was like some set like Mandarin Rings or Infinity Gems. Uh, but these tarot cards, they look close enough to like what an actual tarot card deck would look like. And the artwork, I don't know if this is artwork specific to the comics or covers or if WizKids did this themselves. But the art is actually well done. And if you have a full set of these tarot cards or just a set of a couple of these tarot cards, it would be something cool to like have on display. So it's something that like, even if I never use them, I wouldn't mind having, you know, Legion in a wheelchair staring at two people. That's pretty fun. As far as artwork goes. Um, 
and it, like it's something that's not costing me anything to have so if i can get like a a little frame and get a full set of these having vulcan sitting in like a throne having legion in his wheelchair having you know wolverine staring at uh scott and jean gray having uh whoever this is holding the the magician holding the sword against the cheese wheel the tower is probably like the lamest one because it's just a tower uh but no like i i really actually like the design of these it'll be interesting to see if they're implemented well and if i actually want to play them but this is something like team up cards didn't do it for me uh id cards were like necessary for the game but not necessarily like fun or collectible outside of meta play these are something that I think might not be meta competitive, whatever, but might be like a fun collecting aspect thing. So I'm in it. I'm down. Um, I'm ready for some organized play. Of course, we've got the, the f- fantastic four organized whatever right. thing going on in at the, the same time. That. Yeah. Oh, well, that's not going to be at the same time. That's well, like a three month right. thing, right? It's going to be over by the time no. this starts. And was this the release most date, likely or is this just like a maybe. So don't know release date yet, right? In like these three month things, normally what happens is they get like a little behind, and like one store is finished before another store gets like month Ooh, one. Rip. Yeah. Um, but that being said, it'll be you know it'll be great for those communities that can actually run these events. And uh, if you're not in a place that can run these events, it looks like you'll be able to collect most of the stuff anyhow. Uh, without having to like nice. buy it on secondary market, except for, of course, like the LE figures and yada yada. But yeah. I'm interested. I'm really down for it. I like tarot cards. I'm not, you know, I do not believe in tarot card readings or mystics or psychics or any of that stuff. Just not in my forte. I don't buy it. Still, it's all about that, though. No, I'm just yeah. kidding. I I, we, I say that all in in good fun. No, they do look if, pretty. If I will agree it, with you, though. I'm the, super the art, fine with it. Art, is but at cool. the same time, I think it. Yeah, the art's really cool. I will and... say one thing though is that I thought ID cards were fine in display. I honestly, because Avengers ID cards are like real things they have in comics. Like I have one, like my wallet has that little window frame where your normal ID should go, and I have my Captain America ID card sitting there. Like that's just kind of fun, you know. They were also Did like your cool store props. Get the ID prop where you could put ginormous your one picture. Uh, I mean, that was in 2015. I didn't really have a store at the time, so I guess mm. no. Yeah, You're I have like no one idea. Of those fake gamer boys. I'm one of those fake gamer boys. Uh, absolutely, hundred percent. You're right, Simeon. <laughs> Uh, yep. Oh, that's could me. Have, could have told from your voice. This guy only likes ID cards if they're not real from 2015 with a giant slot where you shove your face in and get a picture mm-hmm. taken. That's me. <laughs> that was probably the last really cool, like, WizKids promo they did for in-store play. That was neat. That was really, yeah, that was absolutely I mean, really cool. It was kind of lame, but at the same time, it was really cool compared to the nothing compared to nothing yeah exactly compared to our nothing we have yeah yeah maybe they'll send us swords like actual real life swords for the gonna get swords yeah they're like here's an idea to drum up interest in local plague and monthly op kits have some dudes fight to the death with these swords (laughs) we had to actually show up for hero clicks then That'd actually be worth going to the store for. Uh, I'm just I kidding. just I realized. As as I can. So I've been looking at this Mojo sculpt where he's like pirate yeah. Mojo. Okay. For the longest time, I thought he was holding like a weird cigar or pipe or something. It's like ye oldie time steampunk microphone. Why did it take oh. me so long to figure that out? That's cool. That's a, yeah, that's a microphone. I was like, I looked at that and I first thought it was like an eyeglass. Like yeah. A, a well, telescope. that's yeah. It's like weird yeah. gold and like okay. Yeah, that's a microphone. I was like, he's holding the cigar from the wrong end because, like, the ash part is towards his face. Ojo's nasty like that. He wants I mean, to he lick would. the burning yeah. ash part. You look at him. Actually, this version, ugh. He's very 90s villain. Like do be kind of dripping, Disney though, with that villain. ice on his neck, I will say. Yeah, got them yeah. ruby anchors around his neck. That dude. <laughs> 
Uh, but that is, yeah, that's X of Swords. Um, yeah. You know, if you oh. want to, if you want to participate, reach out to your local shop. If you want to wait till X of Guns comes out, you know, reach out to Marvel and tell them that uh, Simeon Bruce has a really solid game plan for X of X Guns. X of Guns pitch meeting is, <laughs> is what I want to sit should, in on. Yeah, they should absolutely hear us out for that because uh, turns out it's the 20th century and swords don't do it very yeah, much anymore. Come on. Unless you got sword gun somewhere in there in that set. I want it. I want it. You've advanced as a society. Anyways, hey, that was a lot of talking about X-Men and swords and other things I personally don't care about. So, uh, not to deride all of that, I actually am not, ex- I'm not excited. I will say this. I'm blatantly not excited to have to buy X-Men seals to then play at my store. That's really going to suck just because I hate the X-Men. But I am excited for a sealed set of boosters like that for like just being an OP kit set. That is cool. That to me is cool. I've never got to play in one of those besides, I guess, Regenesis. But like Regenesis sucked. It was little those. You know what I mean? I mean like it wasn't a booster set. War of Realms was cool. Age of Ultron sucked. Civil War kind of sucked. War of Light. Um, you said War of Realms. Or and someone's going to be like, oh, actually, it's... yeah, War of Light was cool. Uh, I did play Ultron any, was great. That's my problem. Well. I, I never wasn't played it well. Yeah, I'm excited to finally play in an event like twelve times. Um, no, I I think that organized plays are fun, and I think it's a more fun sealed than normal sealed. And yeah. of course, your your local shop is free to do it however they want. So if you want to be able to be, like mix Fantastic Four boosters with these, or <laughs> you know, uh, Justice yeah. League boosters with these, or like whatever. Um, you'll probably be free to do so because really hero clicks or whiz kids, I should say, uh, does not like hold you to a specific type of tournament. They just, they recommend a specific type. They can't, they can't make you, you can't make me do anything. Yeah. Maybe you can. Sorry. All right, guys, didn't mean to defend. Um, but yeah, that's X of Swords. Hey, that's basically it for news. I, I was honestly thinking the grand prize when I first saw X of Swords was going to be that Phoenix Sentinel. Then I was like, oh, it's Mojo. Huh? Fine. Um, I thought that's when the Phoenix Sentinel was going to pop in. I'm still curious when we get our flaming Phoenix Sentinel. But who knows? Who knows? Simeon, episode 400 is right around the corner. It is going to be February 5th. Look at me, ladies and gentlemen. Look at me. Look at your phone. Open up the notes section or open up the calendar section. February 5th. Right now, it's all we have to give you right now. But February 5th, Dial H for Heroclix is going live on YouTube. And we are doing episode 400. All sorts of really crazy cool stuff is going to happen. We have not nailed down a time yet because we want to make sure everything is perfectly planned out. Technology sucks. We did live episode for episode 300. And it took us a long time to finally get that kicked off. Because guess what? Technology sucks. So... We're going to wait to hold off. You know, we're just going to hold off on an exact time for right now. But February 5th is when we do our live stream. Next week, the episode is going to be the fun little clips that Simi and I talked about this week. If you have any ideas uh, for clips that you'd like to hear, feel free to write those into the podcast. And also, while you're writing things into the podcast, I think it would be really cool if episode 400, you guys just, like, Dial H has been around for good lord almost 10 years now it started in 2013 it's insane absolutely insane to think about there have been times where we didn't upload weekly but ever since i have been on the podcast ever since me and simian have been doing it we have been a weekly podcast we've been pumping out content for you guys we have been ramping up the youtube side of things dial h has never been a big youtube channel at all it's never been like a youtuber like hero clicks channel that you think of uh, like Happy Little Hero Clicks or Mr. Clickso or what Mr. Clickso. <laughs> Mr. Yeah, Clicks. The combination. And this gracious. The Mr. crossover Mr. event Mr. of the Clicks century. And uh, yeah. 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 Um, but anyways, <laughs> like we've never been a big YouTube channel, but we've really been pushing to make truly unique and different Hero Clicks YouTube content. That's not just team build, unboxing, team build, unboxing, top five figure. You know, we want... More interesting things. If we're going to do unboxings, we're going to have fun with them. If we're going to do random gameplay, we're going to have fun with it. We are 
basically the only YouTube channel that does any sketch comedy for Hero Clicks. I think pr- pretty much the only channel I would that does say, sketch comedy. I mean, there's been some comedy aspects that some other channels have tried. Sure. And this isn't me disparaging them, but this is me saying, like, they really got to up their game because the level of stuff that we do, like, I haven't done a lot, but, like, the greatest Shang-Chi hero clicks of all time was a minute and 16 video, minute and 16 second video of me essentially making fun of people that do, like, the best of X figures because there's only three Shang-Chi's that we've had. And so, like, stuff like that, um, stuff like the pitch meetings, there's nothing else in hero clicks like the pitch meetings. We exclusively have... Uh, hero clicks meta humor exclusively on our youtube channel like and that's not even me like trying to like boast that is legitimately i would love if other channels did something like that but they don't um i've tried to push people towards doing stuff like that but they won't so it's legitimately just like on us like you know calder doing the empire uh wonder woman house of x pitch meeting videos those are the only things of that sort where there's no unboxing, there's no meta talk, there's no building of like, it's just insider hero clicks talk for humor reasons. Um, and yeah, it's exclusive to us at this point. And, uh, yeah. Uh, So that big tangent was just to say, he's right in. Um, I would love to read some, views what dial each means for you guys what it means for your play group um why you listen to the podcast why you watch the youtube videos please either leave a comment on the youtube video or send us an email at dial h for hero clicks all spelt out at gmail.com or of course send us a big long message on facebook big long message on twitter all of that is totally cool so you and if you maybe send in an audio clip too, if you can somehow you know email us an audio clip, I would more than love to play that on a pot on episode four hundred or you know if we get them in before three ninety nine point five. Send them I would to me absolutely on, love to do it on either like a direct Facebook message or yeah. Discord message or even like email or whatever. We'll and be able to I play think it. If it's um, like a Facebook Messenger, you can like record a video. If you don't want to do audio, you can record a quick little video. It doesn't even have to be of your face or anything. You can just like be literally your phone on the ground. If it's like less than a minute or whatever, you can send that over messenger. Um, and if you have anything you want to say, like we've been at this a long time. Simi and I put our blood, sweat, tears into it. We really love it. Um, and I just, you know, love hearing from you guys. So this is like a point where we can let you guys, you hear our voices every week. We want to show like the, you know, everybody that listens, like these are our listeners. I think we have the best listeners, the best, just the coolest people listen to our, our show. Like we have the, just the best listeners, the best. Um, I don't want to say fans, but fans of our content, you know, like we're Simi and I are just people like everybody else. And we're like, we're not like crazy celebrities or anything. We just genuinely enjoy making content, making stuff for the game. And we just love that. You guys uh, love what we do. Some people don't, and that's fine. Um, but we want to hear from you guys. If you want to send us a video clip, audio clip, or just a, a long, you know, message, anything, uh, please send it our way. We will read them out loud on the show, play them out ra- loud on the show. Um, and I would just love to hear that, you know, especially from other people, other content creators, uh, anyone in the community. You know, if you were a person that showed, you know, extreme rules to your play group or something, you know, I'd love to like hear about that or, you know, watching all sorts of weird videos. Or now if you walk into your Hero Clicks venue and you say, do you even clicks to somebody all the time? Uh, I love it. I love that we can add an extra layer uh, to the community, and I would just love to hear your guys' input. Uh, big, big long rant just to say, send us an email, audio message, video message, whatever, about like Dial H, what it means to you, stuff you've enjoyed from us. It, it would be really cool to play all that stuff on air for just yeah. to really celebrate our big 400 because we would be nothing without you guys. I mean, in the last 100 episodes, we've done the entirety of our Thursday throwdowns, which was the very first hmm. set all the way up to everything but the last like two modern sets or like maybe three modern sets at this point. Um, yeah. But we did all of that in the last hundred episodes. Uh, we did our extreme rules, our hot ones, our 
uh, clicks busters. Um, yeah. Yeah. You know, we, we've done so much, um, in like the YouTube region. Uh, but also like in between, I mean, we've done a hen, almost a hundred episodes since, you know, episode 300. It's almost been a hundred episodes at this point. It'll be, you know, 99, obviously you're listening to yeah. episode 499, but 399. you know, Three three ninety nine. Uh, Four ninety nine. Sure. I'll just add hundred. are you from I'll the future? Keep a- I'll keep adding a hundred every every time. Yeah. Um, but no, we've we've done a lot of like, you know, whatever you're into. If it's pertaining to hero clicks, we've done some sort of comedy around that. Um, we started doing. I think you know, listening back, our three hundred and first episode didn't sound great. But I think our sound is finally coming together. It's finally smooth. And, you know, to go along with that, like, you know, we've started doing uh, pre release, like, sealed builds. We've started doing, uh, Calder's been doing gameplay from his venue. Um, you know, we've, we've added a lot to the channel, but then also just to the podcast, I think there's a lot. Like, we've added generic gallery, I think, is in the last 100 episodes. Um, yeah. same as, uh, thread dead redemption was not something that was before a hundred <laughs> episodes ago. We've added like a lot of interesting, like kind of content that is based more towards the casual player, obviously, uh, and not just team building and, you know, like tournament results kind of stuff. Um, if you want that kind of content, like obviously there's people that are willing to talk about it, but if you just want interesting stuff that has to do with hero clicks and occasionally we'll have Matt Reed on here to talk about how much he lifts and how many chickens he eats a day. Um, that's, you know, that's dial H like we're not here for a, how to be good at the game time. We're here for a long and good time. Uh, and that's all I'm going to say about that. Absolutely not. I think it's incredibly well said. We don't just coast along what we're doing. We're constantly challenging ourselves, adding new stuff. You know, a lot of you guys liked. Like, I we hear a lot of good things for like Threaded Redemption, but I don't want to keep harping on too much. I think we're gonna talk a lot about this on episode four hundred. But seriously, thank you guys so much. Uh, it's really, really awesome. Um, let's answer some listener questions, shall we? There are dozens of us. Dozens. I'm gonna open. It's an email listener question. Then we're going to do some Discord listener questions. All the Discord questions are, of course, people from our Patreon get to go on the exclusive Discord. And then I'll end with another email question. So first up, uh, Elliot, uh, Andrew Elliot here says, or Elliot Andrew, it says a comma. I feel so bad if I'm saying it wrong. Um, He says, recently and especially within a couple uh, viewing unboxing videos for War of the Realms this week, my playgroup has experienced some serious benched powers fatigue. Don't get me wrong, we love ourselves some Thor sets. However, while watching these unboxings, we just have to say to ourselves, will this be a Charge Quake Blades Clicks or a Running Shot Pensai Clicks? So we are wondering if you guys were feeling the same level of bench powers fatigue, and since you gentlemen have a much better gauge on the pulse of the community, if you think overall community has experienced this fatigue as well. That is an awesome question, dude. So Yeah, that's a pretty is, heavy question. <laughs> it is. I'll we're coming up on. Down this way but almost a year of bench powers yeah so since okay. wonder woman 80th like we are we're coming on close to a year um i will say the competitive community does not care about benched powers the competitive community will find ways around any kind of thing like that they'll honestly i find a lot of the competitive community making excuses for hero clicks and like for for whiz kids i should say um, making excuses, not necessarily because whiz kids, you know, can't make excuses for themselves, but like, it's a preemptive, weirdly making excuses where, you know, we have these obvious questions that as a community, we should be able to voice without being, uh, like torn down in comment sections on Facebook and HC realms and stuff for, but it's like, you know, um, what's, what is Hercules, the God of Calder? I mean, technically, demigod. Yeah, he's the, it's super strength, right? right. I mean, that's, that's his, his whole thing. Uh, is he the god of quaking? The god of I can shake the ground really hard? No, 
He can pick up heavy stuff. Uh, he, you know, he forded a river. He like beat the lion of whatever country. I don't know. He did a he did the challenges, and it took him right. superhuman yeah. strength to do those things. Um, there's some benched powers where it's it's like, hey, whiz kids, um, these are still part of the PAC. How about we find a way to make them work in the game that works and that you enjoy? Like WizKids likes how it works and it still works thematically because currently it's just, it just doesn't make sense. Like I, I'm not going to appreciate any more Colossuses with blades. I'm not going to appreciate any more like rogues with quake instead of super strength. Like as much as I hated getting hit with super heavy objects for like seven damage at the same time, like, that's on whiz kids to be like, oh, this person can hit you for three, or they can pick up this heavy and hit you for five. Um, and we need to keep that in mind when designing this stuff. That's not up to us to be like, oh, we just do without. Like, no. Like, this game is about heroes and comic characters, and we need the whole thematic aspect. Because if we've got a Captain America that doesn't have a shield, or we've got a Spider-Man that can't ignore elevated because like, you know, he can't climb anymore. It like, we took that out of the game. You have to use stairs, Spider-Man. Like it's going to get real silly if we like let this slippery slope of benched powers continue. Um, that being said, I haven't had a huge problem with it in play. Um, the most where I miss it, like the most of the time where I miss it is when, I've got like a big heavy pen sai figure and my big heavy hitter dude is like impervious. That's like the biggest issue that I run into pretty often. It's like, man, I'd really like to not be able to, you know, just like roll out of this or be able to ignore some of the damage. But instead it's like, you're taking five right through your impervious clicks. Um, yeah. I mean, I more or less agree with you. My my biggest fault, I haven't really noticed it in gameplay because I think there's enough legal stuff. Most of the sets that have come out this year, I haven't really wanted to play just figures from those sets, honestly. Um, yeah, I've yeah. still been it's comboing. Like, I've from... been comboing like a lot of Captain America stuff or yeah. older things. So From pre-bench. Right. Um, yeah, I think, you know, Invincible, Perplex... Uh, shape change. These are all like integral powers that do not make the game more complicated because they, well, one, they, they still exist, but two, right. you know, why do I have scrolls that can shape change, but then I have venoms that have super senses. Um, Excessive. I mean, it's, you know, it's literally characters that their whole thing shade the changing girl. Like her whole thing is shape change. Like she can change shape. Mystique, right. her whole thing is shape change. She literally yep. shapes, like changes, changes her shape. shape. Yeah, she <laughs> shapes her change. Um, so, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's like the only thing at a certain point say. we've we've like losing some thematic ability for these figures, right. and it's just yep. it's killing like the casual aspect of the game sometimes. Yeah, all I care about is like the thematic thing, and honestly. I'm really going to be mad if they don't unbench powers for Disney+. Plus. Um, it's going to really suck, in my opinion. I think it needs to have Perplex and Battle Fury and Invincible and, like, just those powers. I think that set needs them um, really badly, especially, like, Perplex and Battle Fury. I think those are very important for certain characters from certain shows um, to just be accurate and just to feel flavorful and feel like those portrayals of those characters. So... Um, yeah, I'm, I think we all basically just agree, like, it's it's killing the thematic yeah. side, gameplay side, haven't totally noticed. Things like Eternals, and then, like, the con LEs coming out that have benched powers is kind of funny how we have some sprinkled in stuff here, because they were older releases. But that isn't really enough to say, like, yeah, I agree. War of Realms looks really boring. I think that's just because it has boring dial design and we notice the benched powers more when it has boring dial design. But it does yeah. look like a boring set. Um, Unless they're willing to do yeah. way more special powers and traits, you know, have this like common Amadeus Cho who can 
uh, outwit and because perplex is benched um, has like enhancement and empower, but within like four squares, unless they're willing to do that for every common, every uncommon and blah, blah, blah. Um, it's like, you know, it'd be, it'd be way more simpler if, you know, you just gave us our little lackey dudes, like our, our white aim agents who could perplex outwit. It'd be so much easier just to give those kind of things back. And like, obviously those are still figures you can play. They still have those powers. It's not like the powers are gone, but you know, the whole term benching something, you don't bench a player for five games in a yeah. row. You right. bench a player for the rest of a game or a game, but it's been, you know, since Wonder Woman. So it's it's time to unbench some of the players. You know, look at some of the other the other powers that like we don't use hardly ever. Look at Battle Fury, look at Invuln, look at like, you know, these powers like that me. are like things that I hardly ever reach for if it's an option in my utility belt. Um but definitely it I mean I think at least it's time to like unbench and like see how it goes, you know, bench pensai and uh exploit and you know, see how I don't know about impervious that one, does. See how impervious how does the when game only becomes... outwit gets around it. Yeah. Uh, so, anyways, uh, we're gonna jump into some Discord questions. We gotta start rattling through these bad boys, uh, so the episode is not two hours long. Um, sexy Uatu Calder, Utwa Uatu Calder asks, "Who is your favorite retaliator?" I might have to scroll up to see new questions, unless you've answered these. Oh, I don't think we've. I don't think we've answered all. Of answered these. any in a long time. My favorite is the Adam. Uh, it's probably tied with the Atom or a Maridroid. A Maridroid is fun for different reasons. Oh, yeah. The Atom is fun for different reasons. Uh, but I like them both. You have Soldier Cubert, which is like the biggest reason. I will say a Maridroid is one of the first competitive retaliators I ever played. Being able to place an opposing character, you don't have to hit with the attack. You just have to retaliate, and then you get to place them. Um, it made yep. for some really... like It's something that a lot of people didn't expect, and it made for some really interesting games being able to, like, throw one of their big heavy hitters, like, across the map. Um, Mangog is still, like, one of the most oppressive ones, and being able to, like, retaliate and then sidestep, pull the Odin sword, that kind of thing. Uh, it was just something where if your opponent knew what they were doing, they essentially couldn't attack you until they took out Mangog. And if they didn't know what they were doing... Um, you'd get to a 150 point man gog in like turn two. So it's a really fun, I shouldn't say fun, but it was a really powerful <laughs> retaliator. Um, and you know what? I'll say my new, my new two favorites because of the legacy cards that we have not seen yet are Surtur and Ymir. Those are just amazing. The, the oh, legacy no. cards made them so busted. Man, I can't believe Surter does 12 pen damage through stop clicks and defense powers. That's crazy. Ymir being 10 points and putting an action token on every opposing character without having to hit. Wow, that's crazy. Uh, good job, WizKids, just really hyping them up with those legacy cards. They're just so good now. can't wait till you play that on a future episode i'm really excited to listen to that <laughs> again we actually That's gonna figure out what they really do fun. yeah once we learn <laughs> once we know it's gonna be great uh, okay well you're right we did jump around let's try to do some quick answers here uh price being equal would you rather have better more detailed sculpts but they're not painted or sticking with what we have now uh stick with what we have now i don't care too terribly like the sculpts that are good are good the ones that are bad are bad if I had to paint all of them, I would honestly that would be maybe one of the things to make me quit this game. Yeah, I'm not. I may ain't gonna be no miniatures painter here. I will I say, know. personally, price being equal, I would rather have more detailed school sculpts and not be pre painted. But knowing the community oh. that we have, would kill that it. would literally would kill, kill off ninety percent of the players. So 
price being equal, I would always want them to be pre-painted because the vast majority of this community wants pre-painted figures. If they didn't want pre-painted figures, they would switch to Crisis Protocol or something. You know, it's obvious like there's better quality in other miniature games. The main draw of Heroclix is that they're pre-painted and you can get a huge variety. Whereas in Price or Crisis <laughs> Protocol, Price's Cro- Protocol is also um, a good game. But uh, yeah, it's a good one. Yeah, Supermarket Sweep. Uh, no, in Crisis Protocol, mm. there's way fewer figures. Even though they're like w- each figure they come out with is like just a knockout. And they're, and they're big. Yeah, yeah. They get bigger figures. They get more detail way less options as far as what you can have on like a team all right uh, next up strangely sexy calder uh asks how would you feel if they added a new standard power to the game and what would you want it to be so if they added a new standard power currently i would feel like really we're going to add one without unbenching ones <laughs> so, uh, yeah. first of all i don't know if I haven't added a power for almost 10 years the last ones were pink um wolverine and the x-men I honestly think there's no point in adding a standard power. They should just you know, find all the powers they do have. Get yeah, the ones off the bench. Their stuff out. That's where I would be. I would say if they weren't on the bench, I still don't know if I'd want more standard powers, honestly. Um, more WWE powers? Sure. And we've done podcasts about what WWE powers we would like to see before that we think would be fun. I don't know what episode it is, but I would be okay if they added more WWE powers. Uh, but more normal standard powers? I can't say I'm a fan. Yeah, um, yeah. New standard powers to the game when there's benched powers. Feel it would feel like I'm I'm cheating on somebody. Um, I've got all these beautiful powers that I could be with, but instead, Wizkids is like, no, look at these new standard powers that you could have. Also, it would go completely contrary to the reason why we benched powers. Um, right. Adding new standard ones to an existing game that does not need new standard powers. I will say, if WizKids got the license to another indie property like WWE, like any property that's not Marvel or DC, I would be absolutely okay with a new PAC that has new standard powers for any mm-hmm. property. Any property that like somebody wants to solely focus on and they're like, this is the team that I'm going to play, I get these five, ten, whatever extra new powers because really WWE powers all work the same as previous like special powers that we've seen. Um, it's just like slightly altered and they were standardized. Uh, so I would be fine with that. But anything outside of that, like if it's just a Marvel set and they're like, oh, we're going to introduce Indomitable, which is like Indomitable. But mm. instead, mm. you get a D10 roll for your willpower. I don't know. Ten. Oh, if we start introducing more than just like the weird color D20 and D6s, that may also be another way to make me quit playing this game. Add some D10s in here. I get like a D&D set of hero clicks dice. Uh, all right. Next up, Luke 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 says, short and sweet. Who's your favorite attacker for 50 points or less? No Sky Tyrant. Thank you, thank you. Um, Honestly, the first one that comes to mind is the Legacy card, 50-point Captain America that just came out, who has close combat expert and then free a close attack. He's just a beast. He's an 11 for 4 at close, top dial, and he can charge up, punch you, and then just normal costed, or then free punch you. Like, that's awesome. And with Venom Harness, he's a 12 for (laughs) 5. Or with Power Gem. You know, he's, I guess that doesn't actually matter because he already has close combat experts, so never mind. I guess he'd be an 11 for 5, which wouldn't matter. But I really like this new Captain America, the new 50-point uh, Captain America. Before that, hard to say who my favorite 50-point attacker, I guess, would have been. Guy Gardner, strong, strong contender. So it's probably, yeah, yeah this Captain America or Guy Gardner, honestly. Yeah, the Wonder Woman Guy Gardner's pretty yeah. hard to beat um, with, like, sheer potential damage output um man i'll say i'll say like headmaster wolverine is probably like my og if i'm pulling like grabbing a wolverine for 50 points it's always going to be that one 
I think there's only a few other 50-point options, but that one's pretty solid. And then uh, this new Prime Captain Marvel is pretty sweet for the 50 points as far as damage output, like potential damage output, and then also um, like protection for your team. Uh, it's pretty solid for 50 points. Yeah, absolutely. Next up, Warburg Mark says, Super Strength, as it stands, is nigh pointless. What suggestions do you have to improve it when it returns? Uh, I think the thing that makes it useless is the fact that heavy objects don't deal too damage anymore, which is a weird change when you get rid of Perplex in the same thing. That never made sense to me about the big rules change. So I would say uh, make heavy objects go back to doing two damage. And then super strength is just back to normal and fine. Otherwise, it would also be cool if super strength allowed you to somehow pick up and move a character, an opposing one, or pick up and move a friendly one as well. That mm. could be kind of neat that you're like throwing people around. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, that would be about all I could think of for like super strength and honestly, super strength's never. I've never been a big super strength stand when it comes to hero clicks. So I can't. No, I I much. agree with both points so what was it fear itself null that could carry opposing characters like you didn't have to roll for it you could just carry them okay um, that was really sweet that's like a really cool aspect uh, if you have super strength and you're a, like the opposing character doesn't or they're like standard sized or tiny sized the aspect that you would be able to like pick them up and carry them across the map seems pretty like interesting and cool to me um but yeah I, I think making like the main thing would be making super strength deal that additional damage because here's the thing if like my character has a printed three but they're a super strong character and then let's say like wolverine has uh, or not wolverine i'll go with uh shang chi for example shang chi has a printed three it's like, well, obviously they both have a printed three, but the dude that has super strength is going to hit a lot harder if he manages to hit. So I'm not talking about like how easy it is to hit, how like good they are at being able to punch, how fast they are. I'm not talking about any of that. I'm talking about like when they do make contact, which one's going to deal more damage. I feel like regardless of the character, Colossus is going to deal way more damage than somebody who's just like the absolute master of all martial arts. Like, yeah, you might yeah. know the precision strike, the like the best place to hit them. You might get them with like a nice liver shot, but like Colossus is like two tons of steel punching <laughs> you, you know? That's like getting yeah. hit with a car crash compared to a dude that just knows how to hit you in the chin. Um yeah, it's I don't know. I think super strength definitely needs to one probably, you know, since close combat expert has a plus one attack, plus one damage, super strength could just do plus one damage static. And then when you pick up a light or heavy, also like another oh, sure. one from that, there you go. that would be something where I'm like, yeah, that makes sense because, you know, obviously this guy's already doing more damage than his printed damage because he's super right. strong. He but punches then, you, yeah. Yeah, but then also when he's holding an object, he does more damage. Like, right? Right? Am I crazy? Uh, Am I crazy? Uh, no, that's no, that's a good point. That's good. That sounds good to me. That's a good fix, I think. Uh, all right. What's the next one? Uh, okay. What would be some of your favorite comic events that you'd like to see get clicks that they have yet to do so? This is a bit tough because I normally read comic events... I find out a hero clicks event is happening, honestly. So, uh, Simeon, I'm trying to look up comic events I can think of that I've read not because of hero clicks. I guess Galactic so, Storm, Operation Galactic Storm would be a fine event. That was a 90s event. Uh, what am I talking about? Secret Wars. They've yet to make an original Secret Wars, the event of all yeah. events, the Which first the, real comic the event. Like, and stuff. Like, yeah, let's get in this. Yeah, let's get a freaking secret war, like a real secret wars event. That's that's my answer. I don't, yeah, absolutely. We need that so bad. 
I I was going to say, I, and I'm stealing this slightly from someone that I saw say it online, um, but multiversity for DC was such a cool concept. So it it was essentially like the secret wars of DC where um, I can't remember the name of, it was the monitor, not the anti-monitor, but like the good version. The monitor was being uh-huh. attacked and had to pull from multiple DC like realities, pull all these different characters. So you got all these like alternate versions of normal DC characters and stuff that had to then fight against like this multiversal threat. And so multiversity was like the, the hub of where they were like watching this threat happen. And that's where I first saw like peacemaker and, um, a lot of like other, that was like the, I can't remember Pax Americana issue of multiversity. Um, but the, yeah, it's like a really fun event. A lot of characters to pull from a lot of really fun, interesting, like traits and powers and stuff that you could do. And I mean, DC already is behind, so it'd be perfectly fine to go for multiversity because otherwise you're going to have to go for like more, whatever bat metal or whatever that series is oh, called. Yeah. Um, yeah. Also like the Watchmen, like doomsday clock series would be fun. As far as Marvel, all of my interesting Marvel like storylines have pretty much been covered because Jonathan Hickman is like my favorite. And so other than like one off single character events, uh, most big events in Marvel have been covered by WizKids already. Okay. Yeah, I think it's fair. I forgot about the uh, Watchmen book. I would like that. And especially anything with Peacemaker. Get it made. Get it made. made. Uh, right now. But yeah. No, totally. Um, Next up, Chance McCall asks, if you could develop a Fast Forces based on a single Star Wars movie, which would you pick and who would be in it? Uh, to not feel like the obvious answer is like a new hope right like a new hope princess leia luke skywalker han solo obi-wan kenobi chewbacca r2d2 like c3po duo or darth that, vader though, right yeah right like, like you kind of have to I, I mean as much as i like clone wars and i like the prequels and i yeah. like rogue one and you know even uh even the mandalorian and stuff like that as much as i like those kind of things I feel like if we finally got the shot to do um, Star Wars, we would have to go with like oh. the OG, like the best of the best. I'm not even going to pretend like Han Solo isn't like the coolest part of the original Star Wars series. He absolutely like, is. Yeah. That's just a fact you've spoken, Simeon. Yeah. I don't know how you would possibly <laughs> pick anyone other than that. Yeah. And like honestly, like be able to sleep at night, right? Dude, he is he is hundred percent the coolest part. The only other character who you could maybe consider to be co- cooler is Jar Jar Solo. Binks. Like, is no, I was gonna for original series, I was gonna say oh. Lando Calrissian. Lando Calrissian might be cooler because he plays cool, but he's not a cooler character because Han Solo just does too much. He does too much cool stuff, and it's just sort of like, hey, Lando Calrissian. Um, but <laughs> if if we got any other Star Wars movie as a Fast Forces, the only other one I'd be okay with is like Revenge of the Sith, where it's like Obi Wan, Anakin. Uh, we could maybe do Palpatine, but I mean, you can do Count Dooku, uh, you can do General Grievous, you could do like Rex or Cody for clone troopers, uh, or a Yoda. You know, I think there's also good stuff to pick there, but yeah, mostly like uh, whatever Anakin. We won. General Grievous, hundred percent, has got to be in it. I think we could do Captain Rex. I think it'd be fine. And then, like, we could do Mace Windu, Palpatine, something like that. Yeah, uh, Count Captain Dooku, like said, like Rexum. Rexum. He wrecks some people. That's for sure. Uh, and yeah, like that would also be that'd be the only other Star Wars movie where I'd be like, okay, yeah, fine. I'd, I'll allow it. I'll allow it. Um, yeah. Next up, we have. Uh, sexy Watu Calder says, "What set would make you just quit the game?" So, the, like the thing about Heroics <laughs> is, they can release 
any set and I can just pass on it. I don't ever have to quit the game based yeah. off like on like a single set. Unless it was like something where they were like just real off the mark, real like I you know, I I can't even say it on air, but if they like really just <laughs> abandoned like a certain minority of people on purpose, I'd be like, "Wow, this company is really messed up," kind of thing. Um, but I, I don't think that like WizKids would ever do that. I don't think like that's something that's in their nature or like they're uh, obviously not in their best interest. Uh, so I can't imagine a singular, you know, um, yeah, even like random properties that they could get. I can't think of anything like they could make yeah. a, you know, a Barbie set or uh, My Little Pony set, like some people thought they were going to at one point when they yep. made, made those figures. They could make that set, and I would be 100% fine with it. I might not spend a ton of money on buying it, but I'd be super okay with it existing. Um, yeah, I, I just can't think of a single thing that they could design that would make me quit the game. Yeah, I 100% agree with you. Like, as long as they're making... Captain America's that I can buy for Hero Clicks. I'm gonna keep playing this game. You know, I can just choose not to play those figures. You know, I, other people can play them and have fun. Somebody out there is gonna want it. That's totally fine. All that said, if they do make a Dragon Ball set, I will quit this game so fast. You have no idea. <laughs> I'm just throwing that out I'll quit, there. I'll quit playing at my local venue. Will, that's for I sure. will quit playing at my local venue. Well, I don't know if any of the people of mine play Dragon Ball. I just I would absolutely quit if they made Dragon Ball. I would say like I would quit buying into stuff if they started like making you buy blind packs of cards to keep up with the blind packs of boosters as well. If they started double yeah, dipping into the community, I would, I would stop buying. I wouldn't stop playing. No. Um but I would definitely stop buying as much as I normally do. And now that the angry Redditor had Neckbeard has left their comments about how Dragon Ball is so awesome, I'm just going to say, I obviously wouldn't stop playing if they made Dragon Ball. I really don't care. I just had to say that because like that's like the number one comment on any, and there's a million of these made every week in Heroclix anywhere, Reddit, Facebook, wherever. What Heroclix set do you want made? Millions of people say Dragon Ball, so I just have to do a yeah. little bit of trolling. Uh, guys. Random anime, Star Wars, um... Yeah, they see Power some Rangers, anime Star Wars, like, Power Rangers. Here's the thing. Yeah. Uh, Star Wars already has a miniatures game. I okay. don't know where Dragon Ball Z is at, but uh, the toy miniatures, it's like it's hard to get the rights for a company that is like uh, overseas. So there's a lot of issues when it comes to that kind of stuff. Uh, there's even more issues when it comes to Star Wars because it's like, yeah, WizKids is dealing with Disney because of this Disney Plus set and yada yada. But at the same time, there's already a Star Wars miniatures game. So splitting the rights between two miniatures games is kind of like shooting yourself in the foot and potentially getting like half the profits out. So it's hard for WizKids especially to just be able to like get these random rights Um would they sell? Yeah, of course they'd sell. Totally. Would they be able to like recomp whatever the cost of getting the rights and tracking down like all the licensors and stuff? Who knows? You know, obviously Trek should have sold well, and it didn't, and that's why we only got two sets. Why? Of... Why should it should have sold well? I mean, because like no joke, no, not even trying to like pretend. Trek has one of like the biggest audiences and one of like the okay. biggest like dedicated nerd bases in America, which is the main set of like where HeroClix is based. So if anyone in the world was going to buy Trek, it should have been us Americans that like grew up True. with that, that were like the the main HeroClix set. And because it didn't do like very well with the OG series, is why we only got the one additional series that was split right. into. But yeah, like and also stuff because like that. Trek is lame, and if you like Star Trek, you are lame. You need to make I mean, sure I yeah. alienate as many people as possible. This episode, but that's like it's stuff like that. Like WizKids took a chance on it; their sales did not hit projections, so they stopped. Like you know, they were locked in for a 
they already did the O original series and they were locked in for um for Ever. Uh, next one gen. more yeah, yeah that one so the bald they, guys they did happened. next gen and that was it like once once next gen was out they had already decided they weren't doing another set after that because of how bad original series did and that's essentially like how they have to look at all of the other potential properties and stuff it's weird because you think it shouldn't matter how good like the property is if people like buy it right they should just want to buy it because like oh wow cool i'm a star trek fan i'm gonna buy those because you're right star trek does have a ton of people that like star trek whatever they have a big fan base and all that jazz all the figures were just so bad and so boring but even then if they made a you know whatever my favorite prop like they made an army of darkness set i'd instantly buy all of it evil dead army of darkness whatever it could be some of the worst figures on the planet. Overcosted, terrible, name it. I would buy it all. Would the rest of the community buy it all? Like, that's the thing. I don't know how big of an overlap there is. There is a wrestling overlap. There's wrestler fans are huge nerds. Did WWE do well? I honestly, I can't tell. I don't know. They must not have. They keep pushing Wave 2 back. So who knows? But some of the figures weren't bad, you know, and some of the sculpts looked cool. Yeah. Of course, it was, mean, a, it was a different way. I was way, able to win but... a, popper, a popper state championship with mostly wrestlers. One of these uh, days, I'm going to be able to talk about wrestling without Simeon being instantly, you know, I won a popper state championship. <laughs> with the, the what championship did you win with popper? Nothing. Sorry. I Nothing mean, with what popper. What championship did you win with the WWE called? <laughs> That's what I meant to say. Um, not, a, not a single one. No, I, not I think WWE was Europe. like. That's true. It was right on the precipice of being yeah. meta, and then they, you know, they didn't give yeah. them specific powers that they really He's... should have had. The other day, I saw somebody playing a double Ultimate Warrior build. That's awesome. That's so cool. I love that. I I wish I was smart enough to, and you know, see enough to take that to a meta table tournament. Double Ultimate Warrior. That's so cool. I love that. But uh, but anyways, I digress. Yeah. Yeah, I, uh, I I do wish Trek would have sold better. I wish we would get more sets that aren't just Marvel or DC, uh, even if I don't like them. So, anyways, we got off on a huge long tangent. Last question: Who do you think we're going to fight? Darth Vader, or Batman? He says, "Edit comics Vader, not original trilogy Vader. Does not matter." Darth Vader wops the floor with Batman literally every single time. He has the force. I would say it does matter. Because he has the force. It doesn't matter. If it's In both versions, trilogy, he, has, he has the force. That man uh, tries to get close to him, force choke. I force don't know. Choke, force Palpatine was able, able to like lightning blast him. It's not like the force isn't spider sense. So like obviously Batman could like throw like explodey batarang or something. Or like right. EMP. Was that going to take Vader out? Take you out know his what the ATM Vader has taken before? Like, come on. I mean, in the original trilogy? Vader hasn't taken much damage. Like, we don't see Vader tank a gets, whole lot of stuff. He gets his arm cut off again, and he gets freaking lightning shocked. And then he still chucks Palpatine down the yeah, thing of the bottom. Yeah, it's not that much. Whatever, dude. But the comics Vader. Slaughters people. I will right, say right. comics Vader is, like, way more OP. Comics yeah, Vader sure. absolutely okay. destroys. Okay. Um, unless we're talking about, like, some specific Batman where he is prepped for vader or like prepped for the force don't talk to me about prep time yeah Can we have <laughs> like, one batman talking, argument where someone prep doesn't time, say prep time. Uh, we're talking no, about like, prep time uh, so this isn't this isn't uh, even like iron man levels where i could be like oh if he's in the thor buster armor um batman doesn't have like thor buster armor like he does have specific suits and stuff but no like, there's no amount of kung fu or batarang technology that Batman can use to overcome Vader. Uh, and I don't even think Batman owns any kind of armor that could slow down a lightsaber. So, yeah. I, I've, I'm going to say 9 out of 10 times it goes to the comics Vader. Uh, 7 out of 10 times it goes to original trilogy. Okay, and then, fine. I'll uh, allow it. Batman manages to like marathon him the rest of the times because he's obviously not just like beating him down with his fists that's not happening right he's got other stuff he can use 
Yeah, like the shadows. Anyways. Um, shut up. Shadows. Yeah, he's right. the shadows. Uh, our final <laughs> little listener bit here. We have Joel sent us an email. He says, hey, guys, I still can't play in person. Sorry to hear that, man. Uh, so I'm relegated to either playing online or watching other people play online. Today, I watched one of the Coffee and Click streamed games, and both teams were playing swap. One guy swapped twice, and the second time, he actually brought in a few of the guys that he initially swapped out, which makes no sense to me. The first 10 minutes of the game was figuring out who was actually on the team, and it was brutal. Swap sucks. Signed, Joel. Dude, I'm with you, man. Swap is annoying to play against. It's annoying to watch people play. I have several people at my venue that don't like swap. Probably won't play swap. I'm so thankful that they're also like swap is so dumb. Casually, the only time, it's fine. It's when uh, you're suck, dude. It's so if you're playing swap casually, shut up. Unless it is really bad, like unless it is frightful yeah. for swap. Sure, it's fine. You know, if you're swapping yeah, in bad can, stuff, I mean, there's bad though, X-Men. There's, bla- there's bad. There's bad. bad. Uh, Illuminati. There's there's bad figures you can swap in it's, and out. It's stuff. still not fun um, to be like, can we start the game already? It's well, like saying just because I chose a bad entity means it's fine. No, nah, it's still annoying. He, listen, to you pick a freaking stat value and power every turn. <laughs> like there are just some abilities that are annoying. I'll say they're less annoying when they are bad figures. Um, I think the most annoying, annoying part of swap is, um, so. The number that you swap out has to be equal to the number that you swap in. None of them can change. None of them can have the same name, whether they're swapping in or out. You can't swap out two of the same name or swap in one of the same name as what you're swapping out. Um, but then at the same time, let's say I'm swapping out 150 points of figures, and then I'm swapping in like 130 points worth of figures. So I'm ending up with less figures on my team. You have to keep track of which characters you are quote unquote technically swapping out for each, regardless of whether like the point values are off or not, because the figures that are swapped in are replaced or they're replacing those figures that are swapping out. So then in competitive play, you know, let's say I'm playing uh, X-Men and I swap in Jubilee, who is 50 points. But for Jubilee, I swap out, like, Emperor Gladiator, who is 100 points. That Jubilee is now worth 100 points when she gets KO'd, um, assuming that the other figures are, like, cutting the point cost down. That's that's a bad example, but that's essentially, like, something that happens. Not to that extent, right. but, like, Strange. you have to keep Strange. track of those point values in swap teams, and that's really annoying for competitive play. Okay. Yeah, pop sucks. And to the person that realized, you play two Captain Americas, you can swap both of them out. You suck as well. <laughs> Screw you for swapping out my man's Captain America. Absolute disrespect. Uh, like that. Avengers swap doesn't have to be no, you what play, now. You play a cap at 40, you play a cap at 70, or whatever garbage, and yeah. you get rid of that one at 70. It's beautiful. No, you can swap, get, you get rid of both of them, though. Get rid of that cap and the uh, other cap. Yeah. I don't believe yeah, yeah. that. I don't think that should be a thing. Someone said it was a thing. On, so. Yeah, the timing on that doesn't seem right, but I'm sure I'm sure somebody's hey. like, mm, actually. Um It's just what they tell me, man. Yeah. I don't know. I believe it. I just yeah. I just don't think it's correct. Similar to like how I believe that Unimind has protected Outwit for whatever power he picks. I just don't think it's correct. You're like, no. Just like no, this is still it's wrong. Dumb. Still it's stupid. Still, still a bad decision. I don't care it's like, if it's uh, the way they wanted it to be. It's still bad. Actually, it's stupid, and I hate it. So I disagree. <laughs> yeah, I get protected pulse wave and whatever power I pick because yeah. I'm Unimind. It it's a, it a throwback to 2017 yeah. for anyone that didn't play with that set. But, all right, we are out of questions. So really quick for the end of the show, I'm going to shout out our Patreon. If you want to support us, you can do it. There's a link in the description. Check it out. Give us some money. You get cool tokens. We're about to ship out uh, some awesome tokens I'm excited for. Uh, the Ultron Drone and Kotai Warriors from whatever. We we made some hilarious... I shouldn't even say we. Luke Luke Luke, super Koya. fan, uh, yeah, made Ultron. some... Yeah, made some hilarious tokens. Luke did great work. Uh, it's just if you like inscription, you're gonna you're gonna dig these tokens. It, they're fun. 
Uh, dial shout I out really quickly. Dial I for inscription was your jam. Dial I for inscription was your jam. I really yes. love these. Really quickly, shout out to all our $10 patrons. We have Sin, Tyler, Christopher O, Shant B, Cody at $15, Kevin Nelson, Adam Masajewski, Alex Morse, and Lucas Van Hollen. Sorry, Alex at $15. And who else was at $15? Oh, yeah. Cody was at $15. And then uh, shout out to Matt Reed for a $25 patron. Uh, thank you guys so much to supporting us on Patreon. We super duper appreciate it. Reminder, episode 400 is going to be a live stream. You will find it on our YouTube channel, potentially also on our Facebook page at February 5th, sometime later in the day, probably around 5 o'clock, 7 o'clock, who knows, February 5th. It is going to be a long, long event. We are also planning on doing either an auction that day or an auction for one of the weeks, and it's going to be a charity auction. Simi and I are both going to choose our own charities, uh, so we're both going to have our own items up for sale. Some of these will include things that will have appeared in Dial H YouTube videos, things that have appeared as part of costumes for Thursday Throwdown thumbnails, uh, and then some of them will just be like straight up hero clicks, you know? I'm going right. to talk to maybe some people in the community that want to offer up other things for the auction, but I really want to keep it to more a uh, it's Dial H for Hero Clicks auction. You're going to get really cool Dial H for Hero Clicks stuff. If you want things like the jorts that I wore in Extreme Rules because they have ripped and I will not wear them again, but you can get them, uh, then yes, absolutely, those would be up for auction. If you want a certificate of authenticity, I might print some of those out for some of the items that have appeared in videos if people really want, want that badly. Um, but yes, this is just an auction. That is just cool Dial H property media. I think I've got my Chicken Nest Firebird uh, shirt and slash my Clixed Oof shirt or Clixed Moth, whatever I ended up calling it during the initial impressions videos. Those moth, items will yeah. be up. Clixed, yeah, I think Clixed Moth. Um, those will be up for auction. Things like that. Also, just rare hero clicks are going to be up for auction. Um, and it's just going to go to two charities, you know, Simi and I versus each other, seeing who can make, raise the most for charity. Yeah. I think, has what'll, another I think what'll, <laughs> what'll actually, what'll well, not actually, um, what'll most likely happen is it'll probably be like a week of build up. So, uh, right. next week we will be doing the best of the last hundred episodes. So, uh, this time next week, when you are listening to the podcast, it'll be what we considered the best of what we could find. Obviously we're not going to find all the like hidden gems Haha, ha, that's a segment that we used to do and we still kind of do. Um, but uh, it'll be like the best of from the last 300 to the current 400. So the last 100 of like the best of things that we could find and clip and make into like a manageable thing that you can listen to. And then we'll also do some additional information at the end of that episode as far as like where we're at with this that we're talking about right now. Uh but when we're doing the live stream, I think what we're going to do is have an open link where you can donate while you're listening. So instead of like donating to a stream like you would for like Twitch or whatever, you can donate to one of the charities. Uh, I am putting out there, if we hit, I'm going to say 250 for my charity that I'm going to shave my beard on live stream. And then if we don't hit it on the live stream... If the charity auction hits it later in the week, then I will do an additional video for that. Oh, um, so as long as we do it, um, and then, yeah, we'll, we'll get in more information for everyone about that. But obviously, there's going to be a week from now to uh, the 299.5, which will be, you know, just some of our, our creme de la creme highlights, as you might call them. And then... We'll give you some more information as to when the live stream is going to be happening. Uh, we'll do some more Facebook plugs, some more Twitter plugs. So make sure you're paying attention to uh, Facebook and Twitter and like our social media in particular around the, what it'll be February 5th, I believe. Okay. Yeah. yeah. February 5th is where we're shooting for. So make sure you're paying attention to that. We'll be going live. It'd be great to have everyone that listens come on, you know, ask questions, just add to the community. Um, don't care if, like, you've ever if you've ever contacted us before or not. Like, doesn't matter if you want to just you know 
throw out a random question, uh, throw out a challenge. Be like, hey, I'll donate $10 if you eat two pounds of cottage cheese. I'm on that. I'll get Grubhub on the phone. I'll get two pounds of cottage cheese sent to me. I'll get that $10. I'll absolutely do that. Calder will show you his secret recipe for... (laughs) Uh, What was it? Oh, come on. Chicken Chicken, chicken farm? The chicken farm. Calder will show you his secret chicken farm. I've never forgotten what that tasted like. I'm like, thank you for reminding me. (laughs) I know. I know. Okay. It's bad. Thank you. It's bad, and you should feel bad. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but no, it's going to be a fun time, regardless of how many people are there. If there's only two, and it's just me and Calder, it'll still be fun. Um, but it'd be way more fun if all of our amazing listeners that have uh, put in so many hours downloading our stuff are also there. And at the very least, you know, just keeping us company. Just, you know, ask us questions shoot us messages, give us challenges, do whatever, donate to our charities. And and again, that's going to be about February 5th. February so it'll 5th. Be a Saturday. Saturday. And we'll try and do it, I don't know, from like 6 to 10 or, you know, it'll, it'll be, be some, it'll some be long long. amount of time that we will be on. And of course, that episode will, it'll be originally live, but then we will edit it down to a more manageable right. amount of listening quality. So we'd prefer if you can be there live with us, but of course, if you can't, um, being there in wallet, not in spirit, but in wallet to donate to our charities later in the week would also be appreciated. Uh, <laughs> when you listen to the podcast later, what um, a guy, this guy will give you some more information again, but yeah, that's about it for this podcast. And again, next week is just going to be a rundown of the last hundred episodes. Not necessarily every episode is going to make the cut, but there's some fun stuff from enough of them to fill out about, I don't know, probably two hours of content, I would say. Um, and there's also going to be some un unreleased stuff that's going to make right. it into some, that episode. A couple so, bloopers, some blooper some bloopers, content. Yeah, some some patron-only currently stuff that is going to make it to unpatrons as well. So that's cool. Um, yeah. Okay, awesome. That is, I think, all we have to say for the show. So, guys, stay on the lookout February 5th, and I'll say it again at the end of the show. Send us an email about a write-up about what you enjoy about Dial H for Heroclix, what it means to you, or send us an audio message about what Dial H means to you, etc., or send us a, a video about what it means to you, and we will get those on the podcast here in the future. And that is all I have to say. Simi, if you want to go ahead and read us out. Yeah. If you run out of things to say, you know who doesn't. That's CoolStuffInc.com. They've got new deals every day, every week, every month. They never run out of things to say or sell. So if you want cool stuff, you should check out CoolStuffInc.com. They've got the newest Heroclix singles and sealed products. That's about all i got to say about that. Happy trails. So if you're looking for emotional satisfaction, my advice to you is seek professional hero clicks. No. Are you serious? Again? How many people even play this game? Like a hundred? Instant deadpan humor. Over How they, six uh, people humor? think I am funny. It's the hard day's work. Not that you know anything about that. Which you absolute fools, it's not richer nonsense. I'm gonna make hero clicks like that forever. Are you kidding me? Hey, Google, attack someone. Let's attack Simeon, because he's a jerk. At this rate. What a bad readout. I'm pretty rusty. <laughs> uh, Jesus. Glad you, thank you for admitting it, Simeon. Appreciate it. Appreciate the honesty. Yeah, anytime.